Welcome back. Hey, yeah. We're In back. person. Well, welcome uh, to our little get-together here. Um, <clears throat> I got a little story to tell here. Um, years ago, um, when I was at USC, I used to have an opportunity um, every springtime to meet with Coach John Wooden, you know, the legendary hoop coach from UCLA. <clears throat> and uh, every year when we had a chance to get together, we always had this opportunity to talk. And uh, I always want to think of something that kind of start the discussion and get us going. And, and one year in particular, I had this thought and meet Coach and say, Coach, what's up? And I said, hey, got something for you. I said, uh, how much do you change your philosophy from year to year? And uh, he looked at me. And as he looked at me, I went, oh, no, what was I thinking? Why did I ask that? No, I felt like a little kid. And he said, Coach, you don't change your philosophy. Your philosophy is what it is. You either believe in it or you don't. What happens is every year the players change. And, and as you apply your philosophy for the players, it takes on the shape in, of the individuals that you're dealing with. But you don't change your philosophy. And I bring that up to start with because I, I think it's important for us to, to – Make a, make a statement here that uh, we've been here a long time. John and I have been working for a lot of years here for the, for the Allen family, and we've, we've had a blast doing what we're doing. And we, over the years, have been challenged in so many ways. And, and in that, our philosophy, how we operate, how we think, uh, what we believe in, it has truly been expressed. And, and, and we continue to grow and dynamically you know, take a look at it and make sure that we're always staying abreast of the times and competitive and all of that. But our philosophy really is what it is. And that's about competing. That's what we've been doing for ever since we got here. And uh, we've applied it to every aspect of every, you know, makeup of, the, of our program. And, and, and uh, it's, I say it to you now because this is where we are right now is just another statement about what our philosophy is. And I really think we've been around the the local people enough where you have a good feel for who we are. You can kind of count on where we're going. You kind of have a sense for what we think and how we operate. And uh, we've been successful for a long time. And, and uh, we're proud of that. We're also proud that we know what we're doing. And, and we, we believe in what we believe in. And, and we're, we're fired up to, to kick it into high gear. So as we go through this, it, it, it'll be evident. I'm not going to share all that, the philosophy stuff with you. But I just wanted to make that clear. Because this is a great time of year. This is the time of year where we are challenged to the max. I mean, free agency just started an hour and a half ago or whatever. We're rolling in the midst of it. And uh, uh, this is a, a, an extraordinary opportunity for us to help our, our franchise, which is what we're here to do. We're trying to do everything we can to make it as good as we can possibly make it. And so uh, the challenges are just so widespread. We, we have players coming and players going and, and financial considerations and, and, and technical aspects of it. There's so many different elements to, to what this time of year brings. And also brings some really hard decisions, some diff difficult decisions. And uh, so um, what, what I wanted to share with you is that I, I really think that uh, free agency, in a sense, is about giving guys a second chance. And... Uh, We've been, I hope, we've been really clear to you that we believe in giving people second chances. We've, we've fought for giving guys second chances. Heck, Johnny and I both have been in enough situations in our personal careers where, where second chances have been enormous for us. And, and uh, uh, so, uh, I mean, and, and there's been some historic second chances. You remember way back when we got here and we, we, we fought our butt off to get Marshawn Lynch to come here from, from Buffalo and, and give him a second opportunity to come, come back to life in football and, and see what he could do with a really clear thought of what we were after. We were after that guy to come here and bring his personality, his makeup, his nature, and see if he can influence this program. And, 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 and it was, it, it couldn't, the, the, the rest of the story couldn't be more clear. And, uh, um, Earlier, more recently, Jamal was in, in a situation. Jamal Adams was in a situation in New York where he, he felt he needed a second chance. He he was looking for another opportunity, and and so we were thrilled to give him that chance. And we made a huge decision with the, with the trade and the picks and all this stuff to give him that 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 opportunity to get a new look at his world of of, of his career in football. And it, it totally makes sense. You all see that. You all know what what, it, what that was all about. Quandre was is another great one that just just happened. You don't know that Quandre stepped up 
in, in Detroit and said some stuff that he felt needed to be said in that program for whatever was going on. I don't know what that story was all about. But when he did, he put himself in a light where he wasn't, he wasn't in great favor there. And so we were able to give him a second shot at coming to us. And look, look what happen, has happened with, with Quandry. We just signed him to a huge deal to become a great leader in our program. He's a magnificent player, back-to-back -back Pro Bowls and all that kind of stuff. Well, that, that's just because he got a second chance and he did something with it. And, and it's, uh, it just goes on. We just gave Al Woods, a guy who had been out of football for a year, and he was, thought he might be done with the game. And we bring him back, and he has a fantastic season. We just signed him to a new contract and got him coming back because of the guy that he is, what he offers his club and his t in, in the locker room. It's just a beautiful illustration of a second chance. He was just in here today signing up with his new deal, and we're, we're thrilled to get that done. Uh, I, I'll give you another one. Uh, Daryl Taylor. Dale Taylor came into this program. We drafted him well, on really uh, on a, the, the future. We had to look into the future. Could he possibly come back from this, this uh, injury that he had? He had a freaking rod put in his leg, and he couldn't play his first year. And he made all the way through that first year. And more. He was, he was barely getting through in, at, the, at the end of that year. And we said, let's give Daryl a whole new outlook. Let's start all over again as we're going into this new year. Gave him a second chance at making his first impression here with the Seattle Seahawks. And he had an incredible year. He was, remember what I told you, all of the he did in the offseason, how hard he worked and how, how dedicated he was. He showed this side of himself that we hadn't even seen in, in the whole first year. He was, the first 12 months he was here. And now he's one of the guys we're most excited about. Can't wait to see him join us in this, this year after his first year of playing. Another second chance opportunity. How about Geno Smith? Geno Smith's had a few second chances. But look at when he finally got a chance to play last year. And he came in and did some great stuff for us and showed that he could bounce back from sitting out for a couple of years and, and make it back to playing. Now, we don't know where, you know, Geno's a free agent right now, but, but, uh, but he's another second chance guy that is, is faced with an opportunity, you know, right now to come on back and show what he's all about. And take it all the way to this, this trade we just made. Drew Locke. Drew Locke's a new quarterback coming into our program. Drew, uh, uh, we loved him in the draft. Our guys were thrilled about, about him coming up, going to take a shot. Maybe we could get a pick and get him. We didn't. He goes into his first year, finally plays his first uh, five games, and he goes 4-1 four and, four and one in his first season, his rookie season. All the promise, all that you would hope to see, the numbers and stuff, show that he's, he's going to have a, a, a great run in his career. And the next two years didn't work out very well. He, he battled his tail off and competed his tail off, but it hasn't worked out. Is this a second chance for, for Drew Locke? Heck yeah, it is. It's an absolute clear second chance for him to show, to take us back to where we, where we knew him to be. And, and, uh, and we'll, we'll find out. You know how we're going to go about it. We're going to think the highest and the, and the most uh, 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 highest level to perform and, and help our club that he could possibly generate. That's out there waiting for us. We can't wait to see it happen. And it excites the heck out of us. And, and, and in that, uh, uh, you know, Russell was looking for a, a a second shot. I, mean, I think, I mean, as I look at it now, he he, he was he he was. Look, is there something else out there? And he's got his second shot too. He's got a, he gets a second shot at, at the NFL. We wish him the freaking very best. He did awesome stuff for us here in Seattle. He was a great player for us. But now his second opportunity. Look what he's going to do with it. He he's going to fly. He's going to do great stuff. And then we support him and wish him well and all, and all of that. And and uh, I think this whole thought about second. Chances is, is, is just so important to mention because that may be the way our people from the outside look at it. Maybe they do. I don't know. Maybe it is, Johnny. Maybe it is a second shot. I'm not sure if that's what it is or not. But this is about second opportunities, and free agency kind of marks that deal. And you know, I, I thought about another guy. You're going to ask questions about Colin Kaepernick. I mean, I, I know you're going to ask him. So let me just put it out there. He he, he contacted me the other day. He said, hey, I'd like I'd like to get a shot. You know, I'm I'm working out, and so. He sent me some videos. The next thing I know, he's working out with, with, with Tyler Lockett. I don't know how that happened, but he's trying. Does that guy deserve a second shot? <laughs> I, I think he does. Somewhere. I don't know if it's here. I don't know where it is. I don't know if it's even in football. I don't know. But it's just people get a second opportunity at, at, at their lifetime at opportunities, and they can make the most of it if, they, if they're ready for it and, and all that. I don't know. I don't mean to send out any mixed messages about that. But I wanted you to understand that that's how serious this is. It's second chance time. And so uh, uh, um, I, I, I just think it's really important that, that, that we 
we touch on these things because we're heading heading forth back to free agency. Here we go. We're going to walk out of here. We're going to go right back to wheeling. Johnny's wheeling and dealing, doing everything he can to come up with everything, every way he can possibly help our club. And so I'm going to take this opportunity to, again to talk about his free agency time. This is a culture here at Seattle. This is a place here where you, if players come here and take a look at it, they want to be part of this thing. And, they, and I understand it. I've been watching it for years. They'll ask them. You've all interviewed enough guys to know that. And there's something in this building and the way we operate and the way we function that it's a great landing place for guys to take that next shot and to take that next opportunity. So if I got my chance to recruit a little bit as we're continuing to work this, I'm going to take it. This is a great place for guys to come. And, and it also in that, because it is, it's also a difficult place to leave. Guys get here and they know that we, we care for them, we look out after them, we compete our butt off at everything we're doing, we have as much fun as you can have in this game, which most people can't figure out how you can do it, but we know how to do that. And when, it's, when it comes to an end, it's hard to leave. And, and it's awkward and it doesn't feel right, and how come I may have to leave? And, and, and we lose a guy like Bobby Wagner. It was a heartbreaking decision to make. We love Bobby White, and he's done everything in the world he could possibly do in a, in a, in a, f with a football opportunity as, as he's had. A Hall of Famer, going to be on the, on the stadium. A guy around town, everything he's ever touched has been, has been golden. And we have, we have to make a tough decision just like we started with him. And, and so he, he goes on, and we wish him the best and love him to death, and hopefully he'll, he'll feel that back. Most of our guys come back, and they all come back, and they live in, in town. They live together. They like being here because they reconnect with our culture. And it's a special place in that regard. And I don't mind telling you that, and I'm proud of that. We've worked really hard to get that done. So as we move ahead here, and, and, and John will talk about uh, uh, you know, all the stuff here, um, there's a lot that's happened and a lot that's gone on that excites the hell out of us. This is a great time for us. It's a great challenge for us. It, this is that challenging time of year. And yeah, we're faced with some challenges, but all we see is what, what's going to go the right way. What's going to happen for us? We look at this just like every other year. We're trying to build the championship freaking football team right now. There's no future. We'll do it somewhere down the road. We don't think like that. We've never thought like that. And we're not going to think like that now. So in, in what I'm sharing with you, that's who we are. That's how we operate, and that's what you can count on from us and our players coming in. And as we draw other players to this team, that's where we're going. And uh, I hope that there's no misunderstanding at all. And uh, it's, it's clear to you uh, what, what's shaking. Johnny? You know? Yeah, just uh, so much respect uh, for Bobby, uh, Russell, everything the two of those did, two of those guys have done and still continue to do in our community. Uh, both guys are going to be missed, obviously, but you know we're excited to be moving forward. Excited to be, you know, in this NFL that's ever changing that you guys see and watch and write about all the time. You know, uh, the entertainment part of it, you know, really does hit home, and so these are really difficult decisions to make. Uh, and we wish both those guys the very, very best. Uh, you know, they'll be missed personally, professionally, obviously. Uh, you know, I would say that, you know, leading into this off season now, to be to to be able to recognize the leaders uh, that we're able to to re-sign here with Quandre, uh, Al Woods, uh, Will Disley, you know, Jamal Adams is a great leader. You know, you guys haven't really even seen that much of Cody Barton yet because you haven't been around him, but he's an enthusiastic, hardworking young man. Uh, there's just there's a lot of guys I could mention. Uh, to, to, be able to, to be able to re-sign those guys, our, our own free agents, to get going on this thing was a really, really big deal for us. And uh, to have that leadership and build off it and, you know, the, the professionalism that, that Quandre showed uh, last year throughout training camp and everything. And, and, you know, we're still working on a bunch of our guys yet. You know, we just had a three-day period here uh, that, that we've been working through. But now free agency started, like Pete said. Uh, about an hour ago or two hours ago, and uh, we're going to continue to to try to resign our own. And you know, we've we're looking to to uh, upgrade with other guys from other teams as well. Uh, the trade itself uh, with Russ was uh, very unique, um, obviously historical. Uh, I'm not sure it's appropriate to say, you know, but from a uh, you know, I was. Uh, not blessed, but you know, to have the experience to go through what we went through in Green Bay, trading Brett Favre, uh, God rest his soul, Ted Thompson. I was able to work hand in hand with him uh, and a number of other people, as uh, you know, we traded an iconic player, and 
the same thing with, with uh, Russell here. Uh, uh, Denver was phenomenal. George Payton, uh, their general manager I've known for a long time. Uh, he, was, he was great. He did, he, you know, we were able to keep this thing really tight, um, answer the questions as appropriate as we both could all throughout the, to the, uh, uh, that offseason period there. But, uh, you know, the guys coming in now, it's exciting, right? So, uh, like Pete was saying, you know, Drew Locke, we, we really liked him coming out, um, can move in the pocket, has a hose. We're really excited to get him into our culture, into our building. No offense, a 24-year-old, you know, six foot five, you know, four, four, four. Uh, I mean, the guy's a freak. And uh, so we're excited to get him in here, get him going. And then Shelby Harris is a, is a pass rushing, uh, three technique, hustle guy, gets his hands up in the passing lanes and, and uh, is going to be a fun guy to have in our, in our locker room. Uh, we've added a couple guys here uh, in, you know, from other teams we've, we've um, come to agreements with. Uh, Artie Burns, a corner from, from uh, uh, Chicago that uh, Sean Desai has just coached, um, having been the defensive coordinator there. Uh, also, um, Chen Anawusu uh, from, the, from the Chargers, who we love coming out. Ivan, Ivan Lewis is our uh, strength conditioning coach. And uh, thinks the world of him, and and uh, you know, funny story. He was, we were actually walking down the hall before, and and uh, and I said, Chenna, you know, I thought he knew about it, and and um, and he's like, oh, you got, we got to go get that guy. You know, he'd be amazing and everything. And he's like, he'll he'll run through the wall. I mean, he's a, he's a stud, you know. And I was like, well, I, didn't you hear? You know, I thought I didn't thought you knew we got him. He was just all excited. So uh, he knows him very well. We're really excited to bring him in. Um, and uh, Austin Blythe, uh, you know, uh, he's coached with Shane Waldron and uh, Andy Dickerson um, it, with down with the Rams. Um, or he's, those guys have coached him. And uh, so they're real excited to, to, to bring him in. And, uh, yeah, also, you know, I, I forgot to, to mention Sidney Jones, who, uh, you know, we traded for last year. We came in, did a deal with him um, uh, pretty early. I think it was uh, maybe Saturday. Or, yeah, yeah. Uh, days are running together here a little bit, but uh, yeah. So uh, excited about what's coming next. Uh, preparing for the draft. Uh, the, you know, the guys are. I'm hopping back and forth between the draft room and uh, uh, Matt Thomas's office, uh, trying to do some deals and uh, you know work with our staff in conjunction with the coaching staff. And like Pete was saying, from a culture standpoint, uh, things haven't changed since we walked through the doors uh, together in 2010, getting to learn each other and spend time together and. You know, uh, it is it is like a family. It is like a marriage, as Pete has said over the years. You know, we don't you know necessarily agree on everything right away. Sometimes we see eye to eye. We got to work through things. We got to negotiate together. And uh, you know, you have tough decisions to make. Uh, and and we're we're just we're excited to be working together and and, and moving forward and, and seeing where we can take this thing. Hey, let me say too, just to uh, close up on the preliminary stuff before you guys ask questions that. Uh, um, this we know that this trade um, affected us in a number of ways. We immediately with players coming in, uh, the draft, um, draft capital, yeah, yeah, draft capital that we gained this this year's draft and next year's draft um, was a, a rare opportunity for us. We've drafted so often on the bottom of the rounds and stuff, and, and to get opportunity to, to to get these picks are, are huge. But also to make this happen, um, I, I think it's worth mentioning that we've had tremendous support from from our ownership. Yes, uh, uh, Jody was incredibly tuned in. You, you you guys have heard me talk before, but I'm going to say it again because it just happened all over again through this process. She supported us challenged us uh it demanded that we that we were sure what we were doing and we could we could account for all of the all of the thoughts and the background and all of the work that we needed to do to put this together but when it came right down to it she said what i see this ha doing uh, to you guys is, john you're back in your wheelhouse and pete you're back in your wheelhouse and she she she's stating knowing that we have so many opportunities to work and deal and and, and uh, wheel our, or, you know, hopefully our creative uh, approach to, to what we do and, and make make really positive things happen. And she saw it in me too. You know, the team's going to be a little bit younger here right off the bat because you're adding so many draft picks uh, that it goes right back to where we started with the, with our program that uh, we were the youngest team to win the Super Bowl in history. You know, okay, we remember that. Well, there's there's some makeup to that. There's some design to that. And uh, it's exciting to us to, to understand we're in that. With, with her support, it just made it where we just were, we functioned right through the process and were able to pull this thing all together. And uh, it, it, like Johnny said, it was, it's historic for the, for the franchise. I don't know about for, for the league, but it's one that we're going we're gonna to capitalize on. We're going to make the very most out of this and, and really as we're in it and as we 
approach the opportunities, we're going we're to kick butt in every aspect of it. So, okay. You're in a place now you haven't been in, what, 10 plus years. You don't have Russell Wilson. You don't have the franchise quarterback piece that you've always had when you were building and reloading. Is it because of him wanting to be traded, you wanting to trade him? What was the impetus? How long did he want out of town? Well, let me start with the – I said a million times to you guys, I had no intention of, of – Moving on with with the quarterback, I, I loved Russ and, and loved him in the program, and that's the way I was I was committed to doing it, and I felt that way all the way throughout. And then the opportunity became available. Where okay, there's a business opportunity here. We we can see it. Uh, now we have a chance to take a look, and and we did. You know, we took a look, and and we're surprised at how how good a deal came to us, and and, and how that was all. You know, Johnny facilitated that with the work of their people and, and made it happen. Um, to, to me, Greg, it's not about blaming anybody or, or, or for, forcing the issues in any, any particular. We had – everybody had to agree to this and eventually. And so uh, we did. And uh, but really, it, it opened up some doorways that we weren't – we didn't think existed really at the time. John, John, is it true that he had uh, told you guys that he wouldn't sign another contract with you guys? I don't know if those were the exact words, but we were under the impression that there wouldn't be a long-term extension. What was the relationship like? I mean, there's been all sorts of reports and speculation about that, but what was it? What was the relationship like in your guys' eyes? And did you feel like the relationship was in a place where you, you could have continued? Well, I've, I've told you guys for a long yes. time, Russ and I worked really hard at, at our relationship. Just like this relationship, it takes work. You know, when you go through years and years and years and all of the challenges and the trials and tribulations and all, and we made it through it. We, we, Russ and I made it through it. And, and I, I really, I love Russ. And, and he, he's like one of my own, you know. And we went through so much stuff together. Uh, and uh, so it, it also brought us to the point where we could talk about this it eventually okay now we're talking about it and uh and so we were able to move from there after our conversations and the depth of the, of the conversations we were able to move and, and and okay let's take a look at the opportunities and that's this is what what resulted out of it it i don't think it could have happened had we not had in the fashion that it happened had we not had the depth of relationship and so um why couldn't you repair the relationship or whatever? I mean, did, did, did it just get to a point? It wasn't where about that. Yeah, it wasn't, it, about, it wasn't about the relationship. It was about opportunity. It was really about opportunity. And, and I, and I, I know Russ may describe it differently, but I really, as I watched it all take place, I think Russ was really, he, he was open for another op, another chance and to, to see what you know what could happen. You know, and he'd seen a lot of great players and great athletes do a lot of great things by by making that move somewhere in their career. Whether it was the the, the quarterbacks that we know of, uh, what happens in the NBA, baseball guys do it. You know, they, he's just seen that happen, and uh, you know. I, it, I think it intrigued him, and, and so it made it available after a long discussion, a lot of time together and all of that, that we were eye to eye. We, we both, okay, all right, let, let, let's go down this road and see what happens. Knowing that, it was still extraordinarily difficult to make a deal happen. It was so hard because there was three different elements to this as well as all the rest of it to make it come together, and so we were going to have to work together, and, and, and if it was going to take shape, all the while thinking that it might not go. And so we, yeah, I would we say the odds were not high. No, gosh I mean, no, gosh no. It was really difficult. And, but I think because we, we hung in there and, and because we had the background and relationship, we were able to make it through it and, and make some sense of it. And, and, uh, and you know, it's going to benefit Russ and going forward. It's going to benefit our, our, our club going forward, too. How excited in terms of why he might have wanted to change? You have to ask him. I don't. Know. I don't. Know the, you know, ask him about that. But uh, yeah, I got all kinds of thoughts. But I don't. I don't need to share those with you. John, you're a guy who always looks ahead. When you look at these next, not just the this year, but next year's draft as well, having two ones, two twos, two years, or three twos this year. But what does that kind of draft capital for multiple years do in terms of giving you options? Oh, it's enormous. You know, we made the Jamal when we made the Jamal trade. You know, it was a. You're, you're talking about COVID years here, so you have two really funky years and. Uh, uh, so, you know, to be able to get the ninth pick, right, and then um, to be able to, um, you know, get to, to 40 and 41 for us was, was, was big, especially in this draft. And, uh, you know, we're going to pick eight times. I say that. I have no idea how many times we're going to pick, right? Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, that, that, that was, it, it was, it's really big. And then especially next year when the majority of the cap space uh, comes to an effect, into effect uh, with – with Russell's contract, and then uh, 
and then you know the, the the draft capital next year as well with the two ones and the two twos. So, you know, four picks in the first two rounds. John, how much were your hands tied by Wilson's demands? How many teams did you have to be able to bounce off each other, or were you stuck on Denver or else? Wow. Yeah, that's probably for a long time from now to be able to discuss. Uh, uh, you know, we uh, we just. I wouldn't say uh, hands were tied. We had a, a ton of people calling, obviously, and uh, you know we weren't out shopping him, and and uh, so you know there was a obviously a number of teams that I had to call um, when we ended up making that trade, um, you know, to say hey, you know this this came together uh, over time. wasn't sure if it was going to happen, um, you know. I had to you know repair some relationships, and that's fine. Everybody, everybody was great, but. Uh, um, you know, there was just a couple teams that, uh, you know, were considerations. And Russell had a no trade clause in his his con his contract. I think everybody's well aware of that. Quarterback of his caliber to get moved, especially at this stage of his career. You said you weren't going to emphasize specifics, but one playoff win since 2016. Do you think that that had a major bearing on him wanting to see to get his score again? Uh, uh, there's no reason for me to speculate on that. You ask him. You guys have mentioned Drew Locke a few times, but do you feel like he's the answer, or are you going to continue to explore options at quarterback with the veteran guys or the draft? Or, or you know, where we'll continue to explore options, but yeah. we have a ton of faith in Drew. We're excited about it. We're ex excited about a, a change of scenery for him. Uh, you know, I know a couple of my buddies who were trying to acquire him all last spring into the fall. You know, so he he's a guy that you know, uh, you know, in my opinion, the media is uh, beat down a little bit. So. Uh, we're excited to get him into our culture with our coaching staff, and we'll continue to to uh, uh, look for guys to to compete with them. Uh, you know, as Pete has stated earlier, you know, Gino did Gino did a nice job for us. There's a number of guys that are still available, and we're going to continue to work through that. I think I know what your answer is going to be from your earlier comment, but you don't view this as a rebuild from trading your quarterback away and the no, way you're going we, about things. We're right back at it. Really, we're going right back at it. Um, we haven't even there's not, hasn't been a step backwards. You know, we're going forward to do it right now. And everybody that's coming in here is coming in here to do that right now. And you know, to share a little story with you. When, when you're in college, you know, every four or five years, you know, you lose all your guys. You know, and, and you start new quarterbacks. You know, we were I don't know nine years at, at USC, and we had uh, you know Carson Palmer and, and Matt Liner and then and, and Sanchez and Booty and and Barkley. You know, and you just keep marching. Yeah, that's how you do it. You know, and, and you. you if you have an approach and a philosophy that, you, that you're solidly behind and you can keep in motion going forward and keep growing with it, then you just keep moving. And it's kind of, I've looked at it a little bit that way. It's like, you know, the guys graduate eventually here. It, it just comes much later in their, in, their, in their time. It takes them longer to get out of, out of school. But uh, it's, you know, so we're just going. Just keep on rolling. And if you'll remember, you know, when we got here in 2010, Todd Lawicki would tell you that, you know, the primary reason that they wanted us to get together was that, you know, Peter had been in, in college coaching and had the, you know, the rotation of players running through. And, you know, they became so talented there, the players were leaving, a lot of them were leaving in their junior year. And, you know, we had, we had moved from Green Bay and we were the youngest team in the league for, shoot, I don't know, it was like five or four or five years or something like that. So it was all about acquiring young talent, developing young talent, and putting them out there to compete. And that's, that was the core of our yeah. core philosophy. We've got to make we this the most competitive roster in the NFL. That's what we're out to do. And, and that means all the way through the ranks. And uh, that means you're going to get young, but, but you're gonna, we're, we're going to mix it with a, a group of experienced players as well as we already have. And, and uh, that's, you know, that's the chemistry we have to create. For all the love that there is for Bobby Wagner, he's expressed publicly disappointment that he found out elsewhere that he was going to be released. Do you have a comment on that? Yeah, that's on me. I own that. Yeah, I say that. That's on me. You know. No, it, no, it, it really is. No, no, it's, it's uh, look, it's, it's, it's. I, I wish, I wish I could have handled things better in that regard from a communication standpoint. Uh, I owe to him. The organization owes it to him. Uh, it's always somewhat awkward when uh, a player represents himself. Uh, you know, we've had some very high-profile individuals represent themselves here, and uh, you know. You never know exactly what's going to happen at the end of the day. So to approach somebody and say there may be a possible trade, would you consider this? Uh, and then that player comes back to you. Um, you know that's not that's not a good situation. So from a timing standpoint, I wish I would have handled things differently. Yeah, I'm I'm guilty too because I, I I didn't want it to happen. I want Bobby to stay with us forever, and so I wanted 
and kept encouraging John, for just, let's see what all the options could possibly be. So maybe there's a way out that, that we don't have to do this, you know. And so uh, we were, each day was crucial as we, as we were drawing closer to it. And then really, it seemed like when Russ's news went out, then everything, you know, hit the hit the fan kind of thing. And, and I don't know. We were supposed to meet with Bobby a couple of days after that, and the timing just didn't work out right. And I, I regret that we didn't do a better job timing-wise. Um, I don't know how he hurt me. You all were talking about it left and right, and in the articles and were in all over the internet and everything about. It. So um, it was, you know, the su suggestions were out. But um, anyway, I just wish I, I, it's a hard deal. It's a really too, hard. Too much respect, to, you know, to have something like that happen. We did speak with him. We did oh, talk yeah. to him together. We walked through things. Uh, so it wasn't like we didn't speak with him. Uh, it was just the timing, right? So. Um, yeah, and I was I was holding I was delaying as much as I could because I loved him so much. Who told him? How did it get out before you told him? I don't him? know. It didn't get out any different than what you guys were already talking about stuff. He just finally, I think, latched on to the because you were talking about it in the media constantly. But he he some something happened. I don't know what it was with Bobby on his end of it, but. Um, well, I would say this, when you represent yourself, I'm just speaking if it was me, I'd be talking to as many teams, yeah. I'd be uh, talking to as many agents as I possibly could. Uh, you know, when you haven't, I'm not saying, I'm not discouraging players from not representing themselves. I'm not going down that road at all. I'm just saying, when you do have an agent, there's a certain level, there's a certain buffer that goes on there. That being said, you know, from a communication standpoint, so much respect that we owe that to him. Was it a all or nothing? Did you offer him less money? He didn't accept it, or what was the? Plan? We're not gonna. We don't. We're not gonna get into that. Sorry. We're not gonna okay. get into specific specifics of contracts and what happens here and there with contracts. It's not. We've never discussed that. Well, let me ask another way. Was there another option besides playing out his contract to, for him to stay here? I would say no. To clarify, with, with the, the timing of all that, there, there's. Report from Adam Schefter was that you guys had told him that you're releasing him. So when that report came out, you had spoken to him. Yes. You mentioned Colin Kaepernick. How realistic an option is that? I don't know. I don't know that. I don't know that. But he's doing, uh, he's doing some, making a remarkable bid for it to sustain this conditioning over the four years that he's been out and going on five. Um, you know, who knows? You know, I don't know. We'll see. Is that about Deshaun Watson? Did you, guys, did you guys reach out to the Texans about acquiring Deshaun Watson? The way to answer that is that he's in our contract right now, and he has a no-trade clause as well. Uh, do you, do you said you guys feel real confident in Drew. Do you guys think you could win a championship with Drew Locke as the quarterback in 2022? If he plays like he did early on, I think he got a shot. You know, If you, you go back to his, uh, his first year when he was, when he was – uh, Balling as as a rookie, um, in those when he was four and one. Um, yeah, he tied John Elway's record for most wins as a as a, as a rookie, right? Yeah, in so, five I mean, games. Yeah, he, history, so. his third down numbers, you know, were terrific. Um, taking care of the football really well, and and all. He just did. It just didn't for whatever reason. The, the coordinator left after that time. Times changed for him, and then the, the just he didn't, you know, he didn't play to that same level. So exactly what we had evaluated, John's, you know, the process had evaluated, he showed, and so you know, John stayed with it and followed him all the way through his career, and we've watched it happen. We think he's still that guy, and so we'll see, you know, if, if he can. What we need in our offense is the same thing we've always needed, whether it was Carson Palmer or Russell Wilson. We need a point guard. We need a guy that plays the, plays the game and moves the football around to the guys that are open and does all of the things that manages the game so that we can play great football. Because we're going to win with defense, we're going to win with how we play in special teams, and we'll run the football to help the whole thing fit together. And that's, that's never changed. It's never been a philosophy that we needed to alter other than to continue to grow and make it dynamic and present and, and current and all. And, and that's what we're looking for. We need to take care of the football. <laughs> and so that, you know, if the guy can do that and we can teach him to do that, and, and Russell was was famous for it. He did an extraordinary job through all of his early years when he was learning the NFL and, and gaining, you know, his, his understanding. He was terrific at taking care of the ball, and we'll need a guy that will do that. Right now, you know, if, if you know, Geno's going to take it, Geno knows our offense the best. If he comes back to us, he, he has an opportunity to, to run the whole thing. We saw him do it in, in, in during the season. We've got to bring Drew along and see how far he can take it. And the competition is on. It ain't no different than when Matt Flynn and Russell Wilson went at it.
same kind of deal, you know. And, and uh, to me, and we'll set up a schedule and we'll figure out all of the guys. And we're going to give uh, uh, Jake Eason a shot as well. We want to see where he fits into it. It was a three-man competition, if you remember back then. And uh, we'll see how it goes. And we've already been through this before, so it's exciting to format it and see how it turns out, you know. And we'll, we'll see where, where, where it takes us. John's been reported that Noah Fant was a guy you guys liked back in the draft. Just what do you like about him as a player, and what, what can he bring to you guys? Yeah, like, liked, like, had his name written down. I mean, it was that close, right? I mean, we thought he was coming to us, yeah. So, I mean, you're talking about a guy that's, again, a big man that is, is, is young. Uh, you know, he, he went through a, little, a rough time early on. Unfortunately, he lost his mother uh, right before the season. Um, really did a really nice job, in, in our opinion, of, of – uh, of, you know, still going out and competing, and you know he caught 68 balls. He's a huge target, and he can run. Yeah, it's a great target for us. You mentioned Cody Barton. Do you him as heir apparent to Bobby then there, or you know where do you see that? He, he's the next guy up. You know, he, he's worked really hard to position himself. He's always been that backup spot. Um, you know, we wish him the best, and again, let the competition you know play it out. How close were negotiations with DJ Reed? Was it similar to Shaq Griffin last year, where it went down to the wire? Yeah, I would say it was it was similar. Yes. Back to Russell and just the idea of where the quarterback market has gone. You guys have kind of been in that world where you had the inexpensive rookie deal and you were able to build around that, and then you had to build around the very expensive contract with knowing that Russell was a year away from being eligible for an extension. How, how much did that play into the decision making? It's, I think it's a it's a very good question. Very fair. Uh, you know, it, it, it did it did play in to a certain extent at the very end when, you know, what, like Sunday night or, you know, when you're, when, when everybody's, we're having our powwow, right? Like, you know, how's this going to go down? And uh, so, yeah, it, it, that, that played in. The, the quarterback class of rookies, uh, this 2022 class isn't like super highly regarded, maybe compared to like last year's class. How do you According feel? to, to. Well, how do you feel about class? <laughs> you take a quarterback at nine now? We would never answer that question, Michael. We would never answer that question. Why would you ask that? <laughs> I think it's a talented group. There you go. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a <laughs> talented group of guys. I mean, you know, I forget Same with what year backs. it was. There was there was backs were talented too. <laughs> Those receivers are looking sharp. <laughs> you see how he's trying to break that off right there, Sean? Like, I'm just working, Mike. Birds, where, do you, where do you see him fitting in? I mean, how do you view that with having lost DJ and kind of having resigned Sydney inside? Well, two years ago, we got very close to signing him. Uh, we thought we thought we were going to do it coming from Pittsburgh. And then at the very end, he had a close friend, I forget who it was, that played for, for uh, Chicago and went there. And then he ended up t um, getting injured. And then uh, you could see him really ascending this season, and, and Sean. Yeah, Sean did a um, great job. With yeah, him. Sean did a great job. Like we had really good information, and he's a talented kid, you know, talented kid. And, and so um, he can do all the stuff that we would like him to do. So I'm looking forward to it. As you look at the last couple nights, so you talked about that Sunday night meeting when you were getting to the finality of the trade with Russ and everything. I know you worked on it for a while. As it got down to the finish line, was there a surreal sense or finality sense? Like, okay, we're doing this. We're going a different direction. And what was that like for you two? Absolutely, yeah. It's sure it was. you know. Again, I compared it to you know with with Brett Favre, right? I mean, you know, you know how it's going to affect fans. So you know, Pete and myself and and uh, Jody and and and, um, and Bert, you know, we we were involved in a you know in a call and, and and had discussions about it and what's it going to look like. But we were able to kind of prepare ourselves mentally. Uh, much earlier than, than than a lot of other people were, so you know it's going to affect the fans, right? So, um, and I remember going again going through it with Brett. So there was a little shock, right? And you know nobody knew who Aaron Rodgers was, and uh, I shouldn't say that they didn't know who he was, but they didn't know how ta how talented he was. So we relied on that faith and moved forward. And uh, you know several years later, in 2011, I think they went to the they won the Super Bowl. When did you come to the realization he didn't want to be here? In the days I couldn't even get close to that. Yeah, I don't know. Was it days, weeks, months, years? <laughs> I mean, really? He was no, no it, it, it was not a deal till it was a done deal. I mean, it was all the way till, you know, just the last couple of days, you know, and we just announced it officially to the traded papers today. So it wasn't official till today. Right, but I mean, his intent to leave and want to leave Seattle, when did you get the impression that was true? Uh, yeah, uh, that's a I don't know. tough one to answer. Hey, we talked about it through the offseason. Yeah. Hey, Pete, going back to you so, won't change your philosophy for a player, both of you. 
How much does, it, does a talented player impact your philosophy? Great question. Yeah, that's exactly the point. You have your philosophy, but it's the players that, that make it come to, to take shape. You know, you have an idea of how you want things to go, and then we fit it off the uniqueness of the players. I mean, I've been saying that forever to you guys, that we have to feel our guys and figure out how they, how they best can be situated so that they can be at their best within the guidelines of what we think is, is necessary. You know, so it's a, it's a blending, and that's why it takes a different shape. And it, we may, there may be some differences in this just because we've, I mean, we're transitioning some key players in key spots. We'll see how that goes. Wide open for that. Wide open for that. I'll take whatever, wherever it takes us, you know. Because that's the only way to compete to do it. You know, you, I'm not going to force anything to happen. I'm not going to force the, the peg in the, in, the, in the wrong hole. I'm not doing that. Uh, but we have guidelines and we have beliefs and things that, that are really important to us. And then we find the players, and it takes this this kind of this dance that we do, and it, it comes together in a, in a marvelous way. And, and uh, so, so it, it's going to be situated and fixed towards the the talent and the and the personalities and the makeup and the character of, of our players. Last question, Jackie. You guys have said a couple times that you're excited for the future of this franchise, and I'm building a championship team now. What are you most excited for with the future? Winning freaking football games <laughs> and a bunch of them. Really, really, and, and, and getting the feeling. Last year kind of kind of sucked, you know, and, and we're, that was that one time. You know, we had that that kind of space in the, in the schedule here, and, and we're just going right back to business. We're going, we're going for it. So um, everybody's coming here. It's going to be part of this is, is, is well, well aware, and that's, that's the only way we're looking at it. Let's go right now. To get to, hang on, to get back to your quarterback question, one yeah, one, 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 Michael. So, so one thing we haven't done, like the, my mentor did all the time, in, in 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 Green Bay, that we haven't done a very good job of here for one reason or another, just the way the draft falls, is we haven't picked quarterbacks. You know, he was able to pick, uh, even though we had Brett. You know, he was able to pick uh, Mark Brunel, Ty Detmer. Uh, Aaron Brooks, you know, we, we had a number of guys that became assets. And I don't know why, but just for, for some reason since we've been here, it hasn't really fallen that way. Now, when we took Russ, we had signed Matt Flynn. T-Jack was here. Remember, he had Taurus Pack. He was kind of like the, you know, he was like the locker room guy. Then we brought Matt in. So why would you draft a quarterback, right? So all of a sudden, you know, Russ is still there. We loved him. Bang. So, you know, the, I think the, I'd the, probably influenced you on that one. Most well, I got I got cut off a little bit, so, but um, so the class the class is is really it, it's a good class. To your point, it's you know it's not you know people aren't highly rating it or whatever, but you never know where you're going to acquire these guys all the way through, right? Where you know the Russell Wilsons and the and the Tom Brady's, right? So you have to look at the totality of the class. Thank you, everyone. See, see. Sorry.